My friends, if you read your Bible, you're going to find in that Bible one particular individual who, like no one else, assists Jesus in mediating the graces of salvation and assists Jesus in his public ministry. And that person is going to be Mary. Hello and welcome to MaryCast. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli, Professor of Theology and Mariology at the Franciscan University of Steubenville. And we're talking about Mary's role as Mediatrix of all graces. And we're talking about mediation in Scripture. Now, if you have been raised or educated, or for whatever reason you, you find this term allergic, mediatrix, this is offensive to Jesus, this takes away the glory of Jesus, I ask you to just give this a listening, because I want to approach from Scripture the whole concept that a woman and a mother helps Jesus in an intercessory role, in a mediating function like no other creature. And I ask you to at least give it a chance, give it a hear, to see whether or not the, the pages of the Bible, the essential written word of Christianity, does not attest to this very fact. So, we begin at the Annunciation with the Archangel Gabriel coming to Mary, giving her the invitation <clears throat> of the Heavenly Father, to be the mother of the Redeemer. Mary says, Be it done unto me according to your word. When she says this, Scripture says the Holy Spirit overshadows her, and the child born of her is of a divine seed. Jesus has no human father. It is indeed the working of the Holy Spirit. Mary, not only in a physical sense, but in a personal moral sense, mediates to us, is the instrument the, the created human instrument by which the Redeemer enters the world. Now, let's focus on this role of avoiding any disrespect to Mary, or to Jesus, or to God himself. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you, if you uh, want to use an expression like, or have heard the expression, well, Mary was just a physical instrument. Mary was not really personally or intimately involved. She was just a physical instrument. I want you to examine what that really means. It seems to suggest that God used Mary against her will, and that God used Mary just for the sake of getting the humanity of Jesus. My friends, that is not a pretty picture of God the Father, nor is it a true picture of God the Father. God the Father respects your personal freedom and my personal freedom. He loves us, we're his children, and his greatest gift he gives to each one of us is our freedom, and he respects that freedom. Sometimes he has to respect it even unto hell, which is a tragedy for his divine heart because he hates to see his children lost eternally, but that's how much he respects human freedom. Do you think for a moment that he will coerce or force Mary to be the mother of Jesus against her will? That's what physical channel seems to infer, that somehow Mary was not personally, freely involved in the work of the Redeemer. No, no, God respects the personal dignity of Mary like he respects all of our personal dignity. Which woman, what woman, would not be upset if she was seen as just a physical instrument, a, a baby-making machine? This violates the tremendous sublime dignity of woman, and it violates the true understanding of God in his respect for every human being, including Mary, the mother who becomes mother only with a free, personal, active yes at the Annunciation. So with her yes, God the Son made man enters the world. Who cannot say that Mary does not mediate to us the mediator of 1 Timothy 2.5? It's clearly the present. Now what happens? Mary soon after goes in her ex exceptional charity. She is the Immaculate One, and we can discuss and debate that one later, but I'm, I'm testifying to the truth of Mary's uh, Immaculate Conception. But as she has the child Jesus in the womb, what does she do? She goes to serve, and she goes to the hill country, and she goes to visit Elizabeth. And as soon as Mary enters the room of Elizabeth, as soon as the greeting of Mary enters Elizabeth, what happens? Two events of grace. Number one, Elizabeth prophesies by the Holy Spirit. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? There was no communication between Mary and Elizabeth before that moment. The Holy Spirit let Elizabeth know that Mary was carrying the Messiah. Extraordinary gift of the Spirit. 
And then secondly, the unborn John, who's in the womb of Elizabeth, he leaps. This is scripture's testimony that indeed in the presence of the unborn Jesus brought to Elizabeth and the unborn John, by whom? By Mary, another form of mediation, another form of human intercession, which leads to grace, sanctification, power in the Holy Spirit. As this takes place, we do in fact have a sanctification of John in the womb. As the tradition of the church would say, that John is pre-sanctified in the womb because he's in the presence of the unborn Jesus. So again, Mary's first mission after she says yes and, and is the God-bearer, she does have God the Son made man in her womb, she goes out and what happens? Sanctification. It's what happens where Jesus goes. Jesus is so in love with the human family that he sanctifies everywhere he goes unless he is prohibited by your will or my will. That's the nature of Jesus Christ, the divine instrument of sanctification for us. Mary is the means by which he goes to Elizabeth and John, the unborn John, and therefore Mary again mediates in this general mode the graces of Jesus Christ. And let's keep in mind our task, our responsibility, our mission, our commitment, our obligation to mediate grace. Now we don't do it as Jesus, of course, nor do we do it as Mary, because none of us, as we'll talk about later, none of us we're part of obtaining the graces of salvation. None of us were called the new Eve. None of us gave birth to Jesus. None of us suffered with Jesus historically at Calvary. But each one of us are called to be mediators of grace in the sense of our prayers and our intercession. Of course, you prayed for your family members today. And so by doing so, did you not intercede for graces for them? This is not rocket science, my friends. This is basic Christian revelation. So, Mary mediates Jesus at the Annunciation. Then Mary also has a role of mediation by bringing the unborn Christ to Elizabeth in Ankarim, uh, in that mountain country of Judea. And there, indeed, more mediation happens. Well then, what happens as we travel through the rest of Scripture? Well, let's go to John 2, 1 through 10, the wedding of Cana. One of the most obvious cases where Mary willfully intercedes to bring forth a miracle. Now, we know what happens at Cana. They run out of wine. Mary brings this to attention of Jesus, like she does everything. She is, as St. Bernard of Clairvaux said, she's the moon that perfectly reflects the light of the sun, but without being the source of the light, nor without dimming its beautiful rays. That's what Mary is at Cana. She's the moon. She's reflecting Jesus. But she's bringing this need to Jesus, knowing that Jesus indeed will respond. So. What does Jesus say when Mary says they, they've run out of wine? Jesus says, woman, what is this to you and to me? My time has not yet come. And literally he says, my hour, my hour has not yet come. Because hour in the Gospel of John always points to Calvary. My hour has not yet come. In the Greek, in the Latin, please, for those who are a little bit more scripturally minded, let's be very clear on this. In the Greek and in the Latin, in the, in the, in the uh, Latin it's quid mihi et tibi. What to you and to me. In other words, what is this to us? What is this to our mission that God the Father sent us on? The hour has not yet come. What is Mary saying? And what is Jesus saying in this? Mary's saying, I believe in you, Jesus, that you will affect this miracle and that that will bring us to public ministry. And Jesus is saying to Mary, are you ready to start my public ministry, which will end at Calvary? That's why Fulton Sheen beautifully says, Mary's yes at Calvary, excuse me, Mary's yes at Cana, do whatever he tells you, is what starts the public ministry and leads to Calvary. And Mary answers Jesus' question, what is this to you and me, my hour has not yet come, by saying, do whatever he tells you, the last words of Mary in Scripture. And what happens? Mary mediates a miracle, the miracle of Cana, which will lead us to the miracle of Calvary. Indeed, Mary is the mediatrix with the mediator in Scripture. More on this. We're going to continue this role. It's critically important and it's fruitfully rich. This is Dr. Mark Mirvali saying, God bless.